It's World Breastfeeding Week. We'll look at the significance and aim of this global observance spearheaded by the World Alliance for Breastfeeding Action, the World Health Organization and UNICEF amongst others. Will privatizing Nigeria's public hospitals be the solution to the issues in its health system? The Nigerian Medical Association says so. Its national president joins us this morning on Breakfast to talk about this. And of course, we have uh, in-depth analysis on the headlines contained in today's national dailies in Off the Press. A very good morning to you. It's a brand new edition of The Breakfast. A beautiful Tuesday morning. We're reaching you live from our studios on Victoria Island, Lagos. My name is Kofi Bartels. Let's dive straight into the action right here on the program where I look at the top trending stories that we have for you. We have three in particular. Uh, as we've been monitoring the conversations on the social space, um, the first one up, Abelo Yabo uh, praying for the abduction of uh, President Muhammad Buhari, a governor of Kaduna State, El Rufai, as well as the presidential aide, uh, Garba Shehu. Um, who is Belo Yabo? I mean, the name has been going around with lots of uh, responses and reactions to this. He happens to be an Islamic cleric. Uh, of course, um, he's a sokoto based Islamic cleric, um, and he prayed for the abduction of President Buhari, uh, like we said earlier. Um, now, if you remember, some terrorists had um, quote, kidnapped the passengers on the Kaduna-bound train, uh, released a video last week showing them meting out corporal punishment on victims uh, and also threatening to kidnap the president of Nigeria, the governor of Kaduna State, whom you're seeing on your screen uh, as well. Uh, also, they also threatened to kidnap some of the Nigerian lawmakers if they did not comply with their, the terrorists, uh, demands. And of course, in response to this video, presidential spokesman Gabra had said that uh, the terrorist activity using propaganda and uh, the use of violence to force governments to accept or submit uh, to political demands is not new all over the world. You know, that is what he said. Uh, but the cleric was responding to the statement by Garba Shehu, who is seen there in a picture with the president. He flayed the presidential spokesman uh, for describing this terrorist or terrorist video, yeah, as propaganda. Um, he now went on to say, to accuse Garba Shehu of being insensitive uh, to the plight of the captives, you know, by releasing such a statement and went on to pray that uh, Garba Shehu himself will fall into the hands of uh, the kidnappers. So this is the point he's coming from. He thinks that Garba Shehu, um, through his statement or by his statement in reaction to the terrorist uh, threat to kidnap the president, is being insensitive to the plight of the captives. Now he said, quote, this is what um, the cleric Yabo said, quote, I pray they kidnap you, Garba Shehu, and demonstrate uh, as propaganda. These are his words. All right, so, but he, he appealed to the terrorists to release the innocent victims in captivity, but uh, uh, went on to wish the terrorist success in their threats to kidnap those uh, they threatened. This is quite bizarre. It's, uh, you know, a bit ironical. Now, these were his words, quote, we're praying uh, for you kidnappers. May God grant you success in carrying out your threats to kidnap those people, but please release the innocent people in captivity. If this uh, were the kind of people you've been abducting all this while, we wouldn't have bothered ourselves. We would instead uh, pray and bless you because they have become a disaster to us. This is what the cleric whom you seen on your screen said. He said, these are people who promised heaven and earth, and now they have the opportunity but became incompetent. Take them to the bush and flog them instead of humiliating innocent citizens who are striving to make ends meet. Uh, the cleric goes on to say, and please make good your threats, and we will support you with our prayers. He's uh, uh, visibly angry there. Uh, he was a strong supporter of the president before he became a cleric. Um, and this is sort of mirroring uh, the, the sentiments and the views, uh, the reactions you know, seen in, in different parts of the North, even from, from the bandits 
who are saying they wish they can lay their hands on the president. It, it shows that, you know, the long held view that uh, Northern Nigeria is just um, supporting everything that the administration is doing is not really true. Um, the, I mean, if you're looking at the price of gas or fuel, it's the same in the north as it is in the south. You're looking at the inflation in the economy, it's the same in the south as it is in the north. If you're looking at um, the falling naira, it's the same in the north as it is in the south. If you look at insecurity, it's more <laughs> affecting more, more the north than the south. That's why you're having a lot of uh, refugees on the streets of Lagos from the northern part of the country. Um, these are the issues. And um, if you watch your videos, interviews, documentaries flying around, you see the people up north are really going through hell. And they are angry with the current administration. All right? In this matter, there's no brother here. They are angry. I mean, if you remember, it was, it was a surprise to some when Northern Elders Forum came out a year or two ago um, to, to criticize the president. You know, so it, it's clear that it's gone beyond uh, the issue of my brother. You know, or my brother, as some will say. It's no longer a time of my brother. This time, people are saying, you know what, we've had, we, we want to talk to the issues. If it's affecting us, uh, then it doesn't matter who is there. We will we'll just criticize and we'll speak out. Um, so so it's, it's, um, I think it's a sarcastic one from the gentleman, cleric, you know, who is saying, go ahead and kidnap those who made life, life difficult for us. Let go those who are struggling to make ends meet. They're not the problem. We'll help you. We'll pray for you. We'll support you. We want to see you flog these people, is what he's saying. And of course, um, this seems to be from the responses I've seen, you know, by some people, especially in the social space, uh, a popular view, <laughs> you know, because uh, the average man on the street in this country feels the government is his or her problem. You know, they feel that the president is the one responsible for all their problems in their life. So, I mean, this, this view will, will fly. Uh, but especially on a serious note, though, you know, um, with the state of affairs, yeah, people wouldn't, wouldn't complain if uh, anybody in government, no matter how, uh, what office it is, is uh, kidnapped. They'll say, yeah, at least you have a taste of medicine. I mean, look at Akwe Madu with his uh, ordeals in the in UK. Uh, a number of persons online were, were happy and said, well, um, he, he deserves it because he's in, he's in government in a way. Um, so people feel that, uh, you know, those in government should have a taste of what... Um, uh, you know, the citizens are going through. So no surprises that uh, he's re received some support for his view. All right, um, let's move on. The next one, uh, of course, when it came out that ASU was having a meeting, uh, let's call it a marathon meeting, um, we, we kept watching to see what, what statement was put out by the organization, especially on their social media accounts, which have become uh, one of the the means and mediums through which they communicate to the public. And um, indeed, they came out to announce uh, this is the National Executive Council of the Academic uh, Staff Union of Universities, Nigeria's uh, Universities Lecturers Union, uh, that a four-week extension to the ongoing strike uh, will commence. They're commencing a four-week extension to the ongoing strike in public universities. Now, they, they made a statement, shared it on social media, but it was a statement, you know, released by the union, which read in part, uh, quote, following the extensive deliberations uh, and taking into cognizance government's past failures to abide by its own timelines in addressing issues raised in the 2020 FG and ASU MOU, or MOA, rather, that's a memorandum of action. NEC resolved that the strike be rolled over for four weeks to give government more time to satisfactorily resolve all outstanding issues. That's a, a very nice way of saying them. Um, we continue that strike. <laughs> you know, so that's that. The, the role of a strike, they say, uh, is with effect from 12.01 uh, a.m. That's yesterday, August 1. So this is where we are as far as the strike is, continue, uh, is concerned. And um, of course, um, we, we're not just now grappling with the strike itself. We're also having to think about a national industrial action by the Nigeria Labour Congress. And if care is not taken, the Trade Union Congress who is saying that they uh, will, uh, embark on, will embark on a, a strike, a three-day strike. This is not a protest. The one that happened last week was a protest. The one that is coming next is a strike. That's they will down tools in the entire country for three days if the federal government does not 
give us what they want. So um, ASU is simply saying, I think it's a diplomatic way of putting things, uh, that they want to give the federal government more time. I mean, they could have easily given the government more time, you know, by going back to the classroom. I mean, you still give them time. But they are simply saying, we are not going to resume until you give us what we want. Um, so it's um, the suffering of, of, of Nigerian students continues. Um, I think the private universities will be smiling to the bank. Uh, of course, um, the foreign university will be smiling to the bank. Uh, the Naira will keep struggling because you have to get these monies uh, in US dollars to pay for, in pounds, to pay for those who want to go to school abroad. Um, and a lot of people now, for them, the only option for their children is to fly them out of the country to school. You know, just fly them anywhere. Um, or you get a private university uh, admission for your child. But what happens to the indigent children, the ones who can't afford, you know, to go to private universities? Whose parents can't take them to private institutions. What happens to them? Um, I mean, many of these people in authority today, um, in positions of power in the country, benefited from one scholarship or the other, which were very, quite common in their day. This time you have to pay, even to go to a public institution. All right. But to even attend that public institution is a problem because of the inconsistencies. And it's, uh, it's a sad one. The president of Nigeria had um, made a statement when he, he went to his country home for the Salah holidays to, you know, say he understands what the parents are going through. Uh, try and paint a, he tried to paint a picture of what parents and teachers are going, uh, students are going through. Um, somehow even speaking for them, you know, but you, you begin to wonder if you, you're speaking for them, uh, you're the one who has a solution. So what are you saying? But another question, you know, the Minister of, uh, of Labor and Productivity, Senator Dr. Chris Ngege, uh, last week again came out to say the federal government is broke and cannot afford to pay ASU the nearly one trillion naira they are demanding. Uh, should ASU take a step back? Um, should also look at a way of giving the federal government some alternatives. You know, you can't have everything sometimes in negotiations. You, you look for a way to find a compromise. Or will also stick its ground and say, give us nearly one trillion naira, uh, and then we'll go back to the classroom. Um, the federal government is broke, is what they're saying. They cannot afford uh, this, this money. Interestingly, the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria had told the Minister of Education to take over the negotiations uh, with the union. And, of course, this was led or spearheaded by the Minister of Labor and Employment all this while it hasn't yielded any result. Let's see what happens in the next four weeks if ASU will go back to the classroom if this situation can be resolved. Uh, that's the size of a top trending segment right here on The Breakfast. We'll be back. And uh, when we return, we look at what the newspapers are saying today. Please stay with us. <laughs>